Yes, hi. We are back with our session. We are talking about a poem, My Mother at 66. We have with us Ms. Rakhi Mishra and she was about to explain the poem to our students. Ms. Rakhi, we can start with the poem and uh, you were uh, first you wanted to dis uh, discuss about the poet. Yes, yes please go yes, ahead. Yes. So uh, I have already mentioned about her uh, childhood days and how she developed her interest in writing and how she continued. She could continue after her marriage. She could continue writing poetry, stories and novels and all. Now come uh, here we have the publications, her publications like poems, novels, short stories, autobiography. You can just uh, have a look on the screen and uh, you'll find that uh, she had a, had an interest in variety of writings. It's not that she confined herself to only novels, or short stories and poems, but she had different interests and she was a versatile writer, right? So from here itself, we can make out. And here I would like to tell that autobiography that she had written, it was initially written in Malayalam language in 1973, which was uh, named at Ente Katha. And, uh, a, and uh, later on, it was translated in English uh, by her, and uh, it was named as My Story. Now, uh, she was awarded several times in, from 1963, 69, 85. But here I would like to mention that in 1984, even she was awarded, she was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature. Now let us talk about her style because uh, it, it's it's not a very she was she was not an, just an ordinary uh, author or a poet. Uh, she, she her writings you'll find that she uh, it's believed or it is uh, said that she is a confessional poet. That means in her writings you'll find confession. She confesses what she whatever she feels. She is very open minded. She is not restricted or whatever she feels. She doesn't hes hesitate to uh, share it with her readers, with the society through her writings. She's transparent, absolutely transparent. And no nothing, no force, no power could ever stop her from whatever she thought of writing. And that is why she uh, often remained uh, as a controversial uh, writer also. Uh, and there was a lot of originality. Even in this poem, whatever I'm mentioning here, if you, when you read this poem, my students will definitely agree and they can uh, connect it, relate it with all these points that yes, she is original in her thoughts. She is open-minded. She is transparent. And the most important thing is that in all her writings, you'll find that uh, that she was very much close to her native place. There was an indigenous flavor of soil. That means the place where she was born, Kerala, you'll find a lot of uh, flavor of that place. Now, here is the poem I have just picked up from their textbook. And so that to give you a feel that, yes, we have this poem with us. And I will read out the poem to you. But before that, uh, let me tell you about the poem. This poem was published in 1999. There is a significance why I'm mentioning it here. And the setting is that uh, they were, uh, she, she was en routing. She was on the way to Cochin Airport uh, on one Friday and with her mother. Her mother was accompanying her. And uh, the theme of the poem, as you have, as uh, Miss Neha has already mentioned in her introduction, that uh, uh, this poem talks about the reality of aging. We all will agree that aging is something which we cannot deny, which we cannot disagree with. Right. And there is always a fear of loss and pain of separation for a child. Right. When you talk about child mother relationship, you'll always find there is a fear. Uh, for the fear in child's mind that I'll be away from mother. Even at this age, uh, you, uh, what talk about you people, you children, but even at this age, uh, even sometimes uh, we feel that, yes, how, how will I stay without mother? How will I be away from mother? Will I be able to adjust without mother? These questions definitely disturb us sometimes. And we have to accept, in spite of all these factors, we have to accept that death is in it, inevitable certainty of death. The death is certain. Nobody can uh, just say that, no, I don't want death. It's nothing that you want or you don't want. You have to accept it. 
and uh, in this poem the poet has described has discussed the complex subtleties of human relations uh, in lyrical idioms that means she has filled this entire poem with emotions with sentiments and she has even uh, she has been imaginative about it now i'll read out the poem to my students uh, when i read uh, please uh, note that how i am giving the pause and all because when reading a poem is just we cannot read it like a prose we have to give proper uh, uh, pause we have to give proper intonation and then 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 only we can enjoy the poem right so here it goes driving from my parents home to cochin last friday morning i saw my mother beside me those open mouth her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked but soon that put that thought away and looked out at the young trees sprinting the merry children spilling out of their homes but after the airport security check standing a few yards away i looked again at her one pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache my childhood's fear but all i said was see you soon amma and all i did was smile and smile and smile it's a very short poem my dear children did you notice the beauty of this poem did you notice something do you find uh sentences how many sentences are there in this poem can miss neha just help me uh, in uh -huh. finding out how many poems are how many sentences I'll, are there i'll have to read it again to find out the sentence okay 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 let me yes, let me yes. tell my students dear yes. students that you'll be surprised to know that it is a single incomplete sentence And oh yes okay it is a single incomplete sentence you will not find even a single full stop in the entire poem you have commas here but uh -huh. no no full stop and the beauty of this poem is even the poem ends with ellipses okay three dots you must have seen this is also a type yeah. of punctuation and there is a lot of significance of this which i'll be talking about while discussing that part there is no rhyming scheme Mm -hmm. it's in free verse and use of comma and but in this poem is very very important so i'll be talking about these aspects while discussing line wise we have 20 minutes in the session and yes, we have because of the technical issue yes. we were, we are short of time so you can go ahead yes 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 uh, let us take first uh, line number 1 to 9 that is from driving from my parents home to cochin last friday morning i saw my mother beside me those open mouth her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked up to yeah. here so what do we get to know where is the poet traveling moving she is driving to cochin airport along with her mother mother is accompanying her what is mother how is mother's face looking like is it bright is it very fresh no. i think from the lines itself lines from the poem itself you can make out that the face of the mother is pale dull and you can make out that mother is aging mother is getting old and mother's age mother's aging is is visible is prominently visible on her face that is what she realizes why is she saying that because maybe she is not a frequent visitor so after certain uh, days she has visited her mother and this time while she is accompanying her mother she notices this and she is disturbed she is not very happy about this fact that her mother is aging and she is uh, growing old her decay has started and then she compares her mother's dull face with the face that like her face ashen like that of a corpse here it is a beautiful co comparison you see she has compared the dullness of her mother's face with the dullness of the dead body corpse means dead body 
Yes. You see, dead body has everything, all the parts. But do you find any emotions? Do you find any uh, glamour? Do you find any brightness? No, it is completely dull. It looks, it's as faded as ash, right? So here, if you say what poetic device the poet has used, you can say it is simile. Note the spelling or simile. I have noticed some, sometimes children write L-I-E or they make it a smile Smile. or smiley. Right. Mm -hmm. So here, my dear children, class 12 students, you have to note these uh, small things. But uh, yes, if you note it, you'll never go wrong. And secondly, we have alliteration here. Where do we have alliteration? My mother. What is alliteration? You have read it in previous classes also. Alliteration is the repetition of the initial consonant sound in the consecutive, consecutive words, like my mother. What is the consonant sound here? M, right? Mm -hmm. We won't say M is the sound. We say M, M is the sound. So M, M, mother, my mother, M is repeated. So we say it is alliteration. So from these one to five, uh, nine lines, we get to know about the comparison that she has made here uh, of her mother's dull face, pale face with that of a dead body of corpse. We will take up quickly the next line, 9 to 13. The lines are, I'm reading it out because uh, already Miss Neha has pointed out we have less time. Yeah. But soon put that thought away and looked out at young trees sprinting, the merry children spilling out of their homes. Very, very important line of the poem. Very, very important line. Because this, these, these are hardly four lines, but these are so, they convey so many things to us. You see, first of all, in the initial part, I had mentioned that there is a lot of significance of the word but, right, connector but here. How is it important? How is it important here? You see, initially, when we start reading the poem, she is into a particular thought, right? What is that thought? She is in a disturbed thought. She is in a disturbed mood. And what is that disturbed mood? That mother is looking very pale. She is looking very dull. And somewhat she has got a feel that mother's end is very near that kind of feel she has got but she's not ready to accept that she says but soon put that thought away ah uh, she's not ready to uh, accept that feeling that thought it's uh, even that thought itself is disturbing for her and to get away from that thought to escape that thought what does she do she looks out she looks out of the window and what does she observe she observes trees sprinting not tree sprinting, young tree sprinting. So there is again a significance of this, this uh, adjective here, young. Why? Because young trees, young is symbolic of something. Young is symbolic of uh, young children, uh, okay. symbolic of youth, vigor, energy, right? A excitement. Uh, and they're full of energy. They are full of enthusiasm. So these trees also are as if sprinting. Now, you will say how they are sprinting. They don't sprint. Sprint means run. They're, they appear to be running very fast. Now, how is it, uh, how is it possible? That there is a question also in your textbook that uh, they appear to be sprinting. Why? How are they sprinting? Whenever you are moving in a car, you must have seen also that whenever you are moving in a car, the trees, when you look out, you'll find the trees, uh, they, they also appear to be moving, but they appear to be moving in the opposite direction. So that's how the poet is using here that trees appear to be sprinting. And merry children spilling out of their homes. Merry children, again, it is something which is in contrast with what she is experiencing in the inside the car. She, she finds the children to be very happy. They are full of energy. They are full of uh, life, right? These children, children means life, right? You people are life words. When we see you, we find as if uh, we, we also get lively, right? So uh, similarly, these children, uh, merry children spilling out of their homes, spilling. You see, there is an imagery here. So I said these are hardly four lines, but they are so powerful lines. Imagery, why do we say imagery? Because here we get a, an image of something uh, bubbling with energy, bubbling with excitement. That is imagery, right? And even the movement, we get a, an image of trees moving. So this, th these, th these poetic devices are so powerful to make the poem so effective and such beautiful poem, which is so close to readers' heart. And we have the use of metaphor here. 
right again merry children spilling out of their homes is a metaphor and one more important thing here is symbolism what is symbolism symbolism like we have trees sprinting young trees sprinting this is symbolic of as i have already mentioned it is symbolic of energy it is symbolic of life it is symbolic of uh, uh, movement right it is symbolic of growth so when we talk about our life don't you feel that even we are growing with time and this is something which cannot be stopped which cannot be controlled by anyone by anyone in this world so this is something which is inevitable growth will take place this is how she realizes that the way her mother has traveled certain uh, uh, certain time uh, of her age of her life she has also from a young lady now she is an old lady right similarly she is also growing and the beauty with this poem is that this poem was written when kamala das herself was 65 66 Really? I was wondering. Means, actually, I was wondering about this. That uh, when does she write the poem? When her mother was sixty-six. At that time, she might be very young. I believe. So, yes. writing such a beautiful uh, emotion at such an early age is a yes. difficult task. Yes. So you have cleared it. Yes. 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 And uh, see, that is the beauty that she herself is writing at the age when she is sixty-six, sixty-five, sixty-six, ninety-nine. I said uh, this poem was published, and uh, you'll find that uh, she has. so vividly described what she is observing and how she is feeling and that is quite uh, an uh, uh, if you if the poet is not very transparent and honest in writing i think such writings are not possible right so um, uh, we'll move on to the next lines we have line 13 to 17 that is from but after the airport security check standing a few yards away i looked again at her worn pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache now my dear children you see again there is a use of but here did you notice yes mm. again there is a use of but you see again there is a contrast so these you if you if i ask you to locate how many buts there are you'll find that there are 3 1 2 3 yes 3 and this uh, con uh, connector the, this but connector is very important here because this tells you how she, how she is switching over from one emotion to another emotion right initially she was sad then again she enjoys something which is filled with energy again she is into some kind of depressing thought right and this is the phase when she is again observing her mother at the security check and she finds that her mother is uh getting older she her face is looking uh, pale and she is again uh, you can say haunted or you can say that she is again occupied by the same kind of uh, thought that childhood fear uh, that childhood fear fear of separation you can see in the picture also that's why i have put it that you see the child does not want to leave mother when the child is small and even at this age when my children my uh, dear students are uh, read, uh, reading with me even they will feel that yes sometimes even at this age you you don't find you don't feel like getting uh, away from your mother you always want your mother to be close to you so this feeling of uh, fear of separation feeling of this childhood fear is resurfacing the surfacing on uh, in her right so here we see these again are very important lines here but after the security check standing a few yards away i looked again at her worn pale worn again means pale as a late winter's moon this is very uh, important here there is a comparison here you'll see what is the comparison a uh, uh, late winter's moon why is it late winter's moon not only moon why is it late winter's moon there is a reason for that you see it is believed that uh, even the seasons can be related to uh, the life the different phases of human life right and we say that uh, my students have already read La lost spring their spring is used season spring is mentioned it is nothing to do with the spring season in that story but spring means the youth the childhood days right mm. the children and they are in the spring of their life whereas mother who is aging who is so old it is believed or uh, poet believes or poet feels that she is as if in the winter of her life she is towards the end uh, a part of her life right and here you will see that she mentions late winter's moon 
now how is it related to late winter's moon late means you'll uh, agree with me uh, miss neha that uh, yeah. towards the uh, if you if you notice the moon towards the last phase of the winter mm -hmm. you'll find that it loses its brightness it loses yes. its shine Right. Yes. If you if we have not observed it this time in winters, you just observe it. You'll find right. that the moon starts losing its shine, and that's that's what has happened with the with poet's mother. That she starts the face, the glow, the beauty, the brightness on her face has started losing. Right. That's why she's comparing here, my dear children. These comparisons are very important. You don't have to bother about the question answers and all. Just understand the. understand every word of this poem and enjoy it appreciate it and you can do any any uh, damn question from this right and what is the poetic device here again we have a simile here what is the simile as a late winter's moon you know whatever you we use like or as it is poetic devices simile now we'll take up the next one we have line 18 to 20 that is again you see but Hmm. but all i said was see you soon amma all i did was smile and smile and smile and she just smiled you see what happens with us also whenever we go to airport or railway station or to uh, see off somebody yeah. what happens what emotions sometimes it happens that yes we are happy my child is going for higher studies or she's going for some job for interview so i'm there to wish her good uh, good luck and all that and i'm very happy that she is progressing in her life and she's going but at the same time there are moments in our life when we have to uh, say goodbye to somebody uh, we we go to see off somebody at the airport and it is so so difficult for us to really uh, say goodbye and in this case when kamala das is about to leave because she had come to just meet her mother she stayed there with her mother for certain days and then she ha had to leave so at that moment her mother had accompanied and she was standing at a far distance and she was just observing her mother her mother was also observing but what she must have said that she is not writing here but how she felt it is just about her feelings but how beautifully she has explained that she just smiled and she just said that uh, see you soon amma the see you soon amma again is important here how is it important here because see you soon amma when do we say see you soon when we are very hopeful when we are very uh, when we we are optimistic uh, that yes we'll be meeting soon don't worry i'll be coming soon i'm not going forever i'm not going permanently i'll be back don't worry so she says see you soon amma and here it is not only she who feels that she will be meeting her mother soon but even she wants to give that kind of feel to her mother that confidence in her mother that she is confident that yes i'll be meeting you soon don't worry don't worry i'll be coming back i'll be coming soon and she smiles this smile is not the smile which she is uh, this is not a true smile it's a pretentious smile mm. she just smiles there she smiles because she feels that if she doesn't smile if she starts crying there mother just think of mother how would she feel so she gives a pretentious smile here and she put on a brave front because she appears to be strong but if you ask her truly how she's feeling perhaps she is disturbed she's perturbed she's very disturbed that maybe her mother will not be alive when she'll come back with this thought she is leaving but at no cost she would like to say goodbye to her mother or she would not even like to give any kind of uh, this hint to her mother that she would be uh, she would doesn't have any hope of meeting her mother right that is the importance of this uh, this particular Uh, line uh, and i said see you soon amma and i did was smile and smile and smile smile and smile you have to remember here it is repetition right and uh, repetition here in what sense that the word is repeated and whenever we have repetition always remember it is with a purpose it is not just repetition it is with a purpose to give emphasis on certain thing and what emphasis she is trying to give that yes she is going to come back she is hopeful whether she is appearing to be doing that she is pretending to be doing that but she at no cost she wants to give this message to mother that she is on maybe mother is also thinking the same way but she is not uh, doing that right 
So here we have repetition, which is also called as uh, anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a kind of word or a phrase. Alliteration is also there. How will you say which which part is alliteration here? See you soon. Said see you uh, see you soon, Amma. So here, sir, 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 sound is repeated, right? Then we have apostrophe. This is something which my students. Uh, might have uh, uh, read earlier or might not have but i i would like to tell you that apostrophe is again a one kind of uh, it's not a punctuation uh, that we are talking about it's again a literary device here with, where uh, we find that the poet is addressing to somebody who is not present there who's absent your mother is not present mother is not there with her but she is addressing to her mother right so that is the beauty that she is addressing to her mother in her absence so that is the Ms. poetic Sakhi, device. I would request yes. you to let's move to the message of the poem. Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, quickly, I, uh, I'll talk about the tone. Tone, as okay. you'll agree with me, that it is filled with emotions, right? Yes. So it is pensive and sorrowful, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the message here? Message of the poem is that aging is inevitable. Can we stop? No. We have to accept the reality, the truth of life. That is, we all have to die one day. We, the decay of this physical body, this physical form, is, uh, is something that we all have to accept with the passage of time. And we should be ready to do, do that. Of course, it is sometimes very difficult, like in, some of, in one of the poems of Sylvia Plath, Mirror, you'll find that she finds it so difficult to accept her own aging. Right. But here you see, she uh, gives this message that, yes, with the passage of time, we have to take that and we have to be we should be ready to accept it. And uh, we have to understand these relations here. We are talking about the relationship of mother and daughter. We have to respect. We have to uh, enjoy these relations and we have to understand what is the significance, what is the role of these relations in life. Uh, as we are. Uh, really uh, short of time. So I, I'll uh, just try to read out a famous quotation um, by uh, Kathleen Houston. Uh, the, it goes like this, words are not enough to express the unconditional love that exists between mother and daughter. I think all of you, uh, I won't go into the explanation of this. The entire uh, uh, quote itself is uh, uh, self-explanatory. And we all uh, are, uh, we all are children of our mother. We all uh, love our mother. And uh, what kind of bonding we have, what kind of relation we have. Our mother really gives us unconditional love. She doesn't yes. see anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why mother has to be put on such a pedestal, on su at such a, she should be given such a stature in family that nobody can be compared with her. She is irreplaceable. Irre Nothing yeah. can be replaced. And I'm sure all our students who also are watching us, they will hug their mother, look into their face. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and, and learn and try to decode what their mothers are feeling right now. Yes, Thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much, Rakhiji, for joining us. We are running yes. late for the next session. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Namaskar. Yeah, that's all for this session. And after a couple of minutes, we'll be back with our webinar. And today we are going to talk about GoLab ecosystems for online teaching. Stay tuned. Namaskar.